Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Sunday, June 12, 2022. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Now, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at the Premium Picks tab at PickDogs.com. I'm running a daily $15 MLB best bet, so you can check it out at Pick Dogs Premium. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Sunday, June 12th. First up, we see the Oakland Athletics taking on the Cleveland Guardians. We're going to see Cole Irvin taking on Cal Quantrill in this one. Now, I do think both of these pitchers have some regression in their game that I'd worry about going forward. But for this particular spot, I do think there is some value on the underdog here in the Oakland A's. We know Oakland was finally able to snap that losing streak with their 10-5 win on Saturday afternoon. And I think in this spot, Cole, Cole Irvin, you know, he's a left-handed pitcher. And the Guardians have struggled with lefties this season offensively. 28th in the league in isolated power against lefties, 29th in the league in team OPS against lefties. So Irvin, you know, coming off a start against the Braves, where the Braves are number two in baseball in team OPS against lefties, Irvin went into Atlanta and pitched a five and a third inning, six strikeouts, and only two earned runs allowed in that one. I think he pitches well here on the other side. Cal Quantrill just is not this much of a favorite. He's not a minus 165 pitcher, in my opinion. Sure, you know, he's got a solid ERA at 3.56, but 36 Ks and 60 and two-thirds innings is not going to get it done. He also gives up a walk about every three innings. I'm going to take the Oakland A's here on the run line, at least keep this game close. I think they're going to have a chance to win it outright, but a one-run game is good enough for us. I'll take the one-and-a-half runs with Oakland. Next up, we see the Chicago Cubs taking on the New York Yankees. Now we're going to see Keegan Thompson and Jamison Tyone on the mound for this one, but we don't have an official lineout for this game, so we could see a pitching change. But if these are the starters, I am going to take the New York Yankees on the run line here. I know a lot of people were not too happy with Keegan Thompson's last outing in the comments section of the rundown videos. He only went three innings against the Orioles, seven earned runs and three home runs in his last outing, a 9-3 to three loss for the Cubs. And until he shows me anything different than that, I, I just can't back him off of that start. The New York Yankees lineup is just too strong. You think Oriole, the Orioles can do that much damage? What do you see what the Yankees do? You know, they're hitting the ball really well. The pitching staff has been fantastic, including Tyone. The bullpen has been spectacular, even with some injuries to guys like Chapman. And I think the Yankees win this game going away. So I'm going to lay the one and a half runs with the Bombers here. Next up, we see the Arizona Diamondbacks taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. Kyle Nelson and Ranger Suarez are your starters here. Now, Ranger Suarez has had his fair share of struggles, but the Phillies are just winning a lot of baseball games lately on a big-time win streak. And obviously, the decision to fire Joe Girardi looks to be panning out for the Phils. They've inserted themselves back into the NL playoff race, whether that's in the division or the wild card race. They're a game above 500 now. They're two games above 500 at home. And the, the Diamondbacks lineup has just not been impressive at all this series. You know, the Diamondbacks are a really powerful team, mostly against right-handed pitching but against lefties it's not necessarily the case they're ranked 22nd in the league in isolated power against lefties and in terms of team ops far worse at 28th in the league so i don't think they're going to be able to do much on ranger suarez who's coming off one of his best outings of the season against the brewers seven innings two earned runs with five strikeouts and no walks allowed in that one kyle nelson is more of an opener for the diamondbacks he's probably not going to go too deep into this game you know maybe one to two innings and I really don't want to see this Diamondbacks bullpen to go seven, eight innings in this one. So I'm going to take the Philadelphia Phillies, keep riding them until the wheels fall off. Give me them on the run line here, laying the one and a half runs. Next up, we see the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Washington Nationals. Jason Alexander and Paolo Espino are your starters for now, but we don't see an official line out, so we could see a pitching change. But right now, this Milwaukee Brewers team has lost. They're on a big-time losing streak, and that includes the first two games of this series. The Nationals have already clinched the series win here, and they've looked pretty good doing it. We saw on Saturday they jumped out to an 8-1 to lead, home runs by Soto, Cruz, and Bell. And although the bullpen did blow that lead a little bit towards the end, they still got the win 8-6. to And I think in this spot, I'm going to keep taking the Nationals here on the run line, getting the one-and-a-half runs. You know, Jason Alexander is not a strikeout guy. He's more of a pitch-to-contact guy. And that does worry me here. He only had one strikeout in, in his last outing with five innings of work there. Seven hits allowed, two walks. So he's given up 14 base hits in his first 12 innings of the season. Five walks to go with it and only four strikeouts. So when you've allowed more walks and you've earned strikeouts, you do start to worry me. And I think the Nationals have all the value on them. Until the Brewers can snap that losing streak, I'm going to keep 
fading them in this spot. So give me the Nationals on the run line. Next up, we see the Atlanta Braves taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Jose Quintana and Kyle Wright are your starters for this one. Now, the Braves are winning a ton of ball games. Them and the Phillies have been red hot in the NL East. And I do like them in this spot again. Jose Quintana, a lefty going on the road here for the Pirates. And although Quintana's been the Pirates, one of their sharpest starters in the rotation this season, he is, A, coming off one of his worst starts of the year where he only went three and a third innings, seven base hits allowed, four earned runs. The Detroit Tigers, one of the worst teams in offense this year overall. And now, B, you're facing a Braves lineup that's number two in baseball against lefties in Team OPS and number one in isolated power against lefties. So I do think Quintana struggles here. And on the other side, Kyle Wright has been super sharp for the Braves, coming off an eight-inning, two-run run, seven-strikeout performance against the Oakland A's last time out. I like the Braves in this spot on the run line. I think they get another run line cover here. Next up, we see the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the Detroit Tigers. Ross Stripling and Tarek Skubal on the mound for this one. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that Tarek Skubal is the better starter in this matchup. You're not going to hear me say otherwise. Uh, the numbers show it ERA-wise, FIP-wise. I mean, you you name it. Skubal has been the better starter. But the problem I have here with Detroit, they don't score a lot of runs. And the Blue Jays have been pretty good against lefties this season. I wouldn't say pretty good. They've been really good against lefties. Right now, they are in the top five in baseball in Team OPS against lefties. And Ross Stripling, you know, he's not going to pitch too deep into this game, maybe four to five innings at the most, I would say. He's more of a, you know, he's, his, his work has been limited over the years to, uh, you know, sometimes he's more of an opener, sometimes he's out of the bullpen. And last time we saw him start against the Royals, and he pitched well, five innings, no earned runs, only one hit allowed in that one. To me, if this game is close late, I would want the Blue Jays' bullpen and much rather have their lineup as well. And you're know, not having to lay too much of a crazy price. We've seen in this series with Gausman on the mound, minus 200 plus, with Barrios even on the mound, minus 190, minus two something. This one, you're only laying minus 150. I think the value is with Toronto. So I'm going to take the Blue Jays here on the money line. Next up, we see the Baltimore Orioles taking on the Kansas City Royals. Dean Kremer and Brad Keller are your starters for this one. Now, this is really not a great starting pitching matchup. I do lean towards the over. We see it at 9.5, the total, and it looks like it's going to go to 10 as well. I am going to lean towards the Royals here as far as the side goes. I have been more impressed with their lineup recently than I have the Orioles, although the Orioles did win on Saturday afternoon. You know, Kansas City is starting to hit a lot better against righties and lefties overall. Some of their lineup guys, guys like Carlos Santana, Salvador Perez, are starting to heat up after really, really slow starts. And Dean Kremer, 6.23 ERA this season. He hasn't pitched much, only a four and a third innings. But in that outing against the Guardians, three earned runs, a home run. Uh, I just can't trust him here. Brad Keller, we've seen the best from him at the beginning of the season. We've seen the struggles as of late. I think he's a good enough to get a win here for KC. Didn't pitch too poorly last time against a really good Blue Jays lineup. Six innings and three earned runs. They'll take that from Keller against the Blue Jays. Against the Orioles, they'll look for a little bit better, and I think we see better. I'm going to take the Kansas City Royals here on the money line. Next up, we see the Miami Marlins taking on the Houston Astros. We're going to see Edward Cabrera and Justin Verlander on the mound for this contest. Really solid pitching matchup, in my opinion. You know, Edward Cabrera, the youngster, pitched really well in his season debut with the Marlins. Six innings, nine strikeouts, only one hit allowed, and he wasn't too shabby in his next start either. Six innings, one earned run. It was a home run, but four strikeouts. You'd like to see that number rise, but it was a 12-2 Marlins win. The two games that he's pitched in, the Marlins have won in blowout fashion. And the Fish have had a lot of success in this series as big-time underdogs in Game 1 and Game 2. They won outright, and they were big-time dogs in both of those games. Now, with Verlander on the mound, they're still going to be big-time underdogs here. But this is a tough spot for me with Houston. I, I'm not ready to give up on them, even though they have really, really struggled in this series, especially on Saturday. But Verlander is, to me, obviously the most more experienced pitcher, but... I do trust him a little bit more than Cabrera. In, this, in Cabrera's second start, you know, like I mentioned, the strikeout numbers were down. The home run was allowed. Against the Astros, a really strong, solid lineup against righties. I do think that the Astros could make the youngster pay here. And Verlander, a nice bounce-back start in his last outing. Seven innings, one earned run, 12 strikeouts against the Mariners. Not my favorite game on the board, but I'm going to take the Houston Astros here and lay the run line one more time. Next up, we see the Tampa Bay Rays taking on the Minnesota Twins. We're going to see Jeffrey Springs and Cole Sands on the mound for this one. Now, to me, Jeffrey Springs is a far and above better starting pitcher in this matchup. 
And he's been one of the better starting pitchers in the American League East all season long. A 1.62 ERA, and although I don't think that number will hold up, he is pitching lights out baseball. Last time, six innings, shutout ball against a Cardinals lineup. It's one of the best in baseball against lefties. He also had five strikeouts in that outing. And the Minnesota Twins, their bullpen does scare me quite a bit. And the Rays lineup is not necessarily a team that's going to make you, always make you pay offensively, but we did see Tampa Bay score five runs in game two on Saturday. I think this is a good spot for them to at least salvage a game in this series. Cole Sands last outing, three and two-thirds innings, eight hits, four earned runs, two home runs. He's given up at least one home run in his last three starts. I'm going to take the Tampa Bay Rays here to get a win in this series. I'll take them on the money line. In our next game, we see the Cincinnati Reds taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. We're going to see Graham Ashcraft and Dakota Hudson on the mound for this one. And excuse me if my voice is going out a little bit. Not feeling the best, a little bit under the weather, but we're going to push through nonetheless. In this particular matchup, you know, Dakota Hudson, I've been waiting for his regression all season, it seems, and he's still got a below ER, 3 ERA. I don't think it's going to hold up. I do think we're going to see the regression, but I was really impressed with his last outing. i got to give it to him. Now against the Tampa Bay Rays on the road, I did think he was in trouble, and he pitched lights out ball. And, and I think in this spot against the Cincinnati Reds, he's going to pitch good enough to get the Cardinals to win. Graham Ashcraft, although he's 3-0 with that 1.14 ERA, I look at the strikeouts, 13 Ks and 23 and two-thirds innings. That's not going to be good enough. And I do think against the Cardinals lineup, it's probably the toughest lineup he's faced since the beginning of the season where he faced the Blue Jays. I do think St. Louis is going to make him pay. This series has been close so far, but I think the Cardinals win this game comfortably. I'll lay the run line with St. Louis at home. In our next game, we see the Los Angeles Dodgers taking on the San Francisco Giants. Julio Urias and Carlos Rodon, a pair of lefties going at it in this one. Now, I know the Giants do hit lefties a lot better than they hit righties. But Julio Urias has pitched really well for Los Angeles this year. We know he pitched really well last year. where He has a 20-plus game winner. And I think in this spot, I'm just going to lean towards the under. We've got two really strong pitchers. The Dodgers certainly prefer righties than lefties. So I do think that Rodon will also have a strong outing here. Rodon's had mixed results lately, but you know what better way to bounce back than against your biggest rival in the, the Los Angeles Dodgers? And Rodon's last nine innings, he did only give up three earned runs with 11 strikeouts. That's good enough for me to take a shot with the under here. This total opened up at eight. I think it's going to go down to seven and a half. So you should shop your lines, but I'm going to take the under in the Dodgers Giants. I expect a pretty close and entertaining ball game. Next up, we see the Boston Red Sox taking on the Seattle Mariners. Robbie Ray is the only projected starter we have right now as the Red Sox have not announced a starter. But to me, knowing that Ray is on the mound is enough for me to take a shot with the Red Sox on the road. Robbie Ray is not looking like the Cy Young pitcher we saw last season. The last outing, the Mariners were able to get the win in Ray's start, but it wasn't because of Ray. He gave up eight base hits, three earned runs, and those were three home runs. Three walks and only three strikeouts against the Astros. And the Astros are a lineup that doesn't really hit lefties very well this season. While on the other side, the, the Boston Red Sox, they do hit lefties quite well. You look, they're number five in baseball and Team OPS against lefties, number eight in isolated power. Robbie Ray giving up the home runs, walking batters, and even the strikeouts are down from last year. That concerns me quite a bit for Ray. I think the Red Sox make him pay in this spot. You know, I am interested to see who the Red Sox decide to start in this game. That's obviously going to matter quite a bit. But as far as what we see the day before this game, I'm going to lean towards Boston here on the money line. Next up, we see the Colorado Rockies taking on the San Diego Padres. Herman Marquez and Blake Snell on the mound for this one. Now, I've mentioned that I do think we're going to see a lot of value on Blake Snell later on this season. He's got very good stuff, Cy Young caliber stuff, in my opinion. He just hasn't been able to locate at the beginning of this season and the same thing at the beginning of last year. The first half of the season, Snell was pretty much terrible on the mound for the Padres. Second half, one of the best pitchers in baseball. So now this year, we're seeing the first half struggles, especially after he started the season late with that injury. And until we see him get some more work in, I'm going to have to fade him until we get to that second half of the year. We saw last outing, Blake Snell was barely able to get through four innings. It looked like he may have got pulled in the first inning. It was not looking good, walking a lot of batters. And he ended his line four innings, seven hits, five runs, and three walks. No home runs allowed, and really Snell hasn't had too many issues with the home run ball in his career. It's just the walks and the base hits. And I think with the Colorado Rockies being so strong against lefties this year, it does make sense to take Colorado at least on the run line, getting the one and a half runs. Overall this season, the Rockies are number three in baseball and team OPS against lefties. And sure, Herman Marquez has not been very good this season at all. I'm not going to say he has. But the Padres lineup we saw in the doubleheader game one. We've seen in other spots this season. 
hasn't been very good, especially against right-handed pitching. They're ranked 25th in baseball, the Padres are, against righties in Team OPS. It's just not good enough for me to lay this price with San, San Diego in this spot. So I'm going to take the Colorado Rockies here on the run line, getting the one and a half runs. Next up, we see the New York Mets taking on the Los Angeles Angels. This is going to be our final game of the night. Now, we see Patrick Sandoval and Taiwan Walker as the projected starters here. And the money line price for this one is set at a pick of minus 110 apiece. We know the Mets have struggled with left-handed pitching overall offensively. They're outside the top 15 in Team OPS against lefties and well outside the top 15 in isolated power against lefties at 21st in the league. The, Houston, uh, the uh, Los Angeles Angels are very strong against righties overall this year. Now, those numbers have taken a hit recently because of the injury to Mike Trout and overall struggles in their big-time losing streak. But I still trust them against uh, Taiwan Walker here. Walker, at the beginning of the season, he looked pretty well. Then he struggled against the Phillies. Then he pitched really well. And then the last time out, five hits, four earned runs, a home run in a 7-0 Mets loss. And I do think Taiwan Walker is in trouble here on the road. This is a good spot for the Angels to grab a win, and grab a series win overall. Give me the Angels here on the money line. And that's it. Those are the games for Sunday, June 12th. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can check those out at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.